Somin Chakrabarti of Dr. Eddie's lab, Johnson. And let me get in Darshan in to talk about uh, this conversation. Darshan. Hi, hi, Neeraj. Hi, Somin. Thanks for speaking to Bloomberg Quint. Uh, first of all, everyone wants to know if you can give us the number, how much Suboxone contributed and how much of Suboxone did you book in the first quarter? So we are not disclosing that number, but you people will have enough indication of what range it could be. But, but you know, uh, one of the concerns that the street had is that, you know, people even talking about levels of, you know, 40 to 50 million dollars. Uh, is that something that could be potentially be true? No. It will okay. be much lesser than that. Okay. Uh, now let's get to a more reasonable number. Endeavor says in their press release that they believe that you sold close to 25 million dollar. Uh, is this an accurate number? As I said, I am not specifically disclosing that number. But all I can say that uh, it will be even lower than what Indiver has indicated. Okay, so we leave uh, Subaxon as, uh, the number aside, but uh, hey, let's leave Subaxon aside. Ex Subaxon, how has the performance been for Dr. Reddy's uh, on the base business, sir? Personally, I am satisfied with the performance without Subaxon. And uh, I think a lot of factors are contributing to it. I cannot. Um, uh, take out uh, the impact of the forex on this as well. That has also some contribution. But I think whatever efforts we are putting in terms of cost efficiency and waste elimination and all these have started ticking in. Maybe we can expect more in future. But we are in the right direction so far as whatever we are trying to do inside the organization. The new products um, for including Subax and 4 we don't see North America, but there are seven new products we launched in India. Overall, there is a, a momentum in the organization in terms of product approval and launch and execution. So overall, um, I'm happy with the kind of performance that we have done, even without SOAX. Uh, okay, uh, Somen, uh, what's the status of uh, litigation on Suboxone and Siboxone uh, and what kind of expectations do you have that you will probably able to be uh, able to relaunch uh, the Suboxone film? So we have appealed and uh, when you appeal you also request for lifting the ban. So that depends on the judge and also it depends on the judge whether it is taken on expeditious basis or not. Accordingly, the timeline will vary. Okay, uh, let's talk about some of the products. Uh, the street was pretty much anticipating that you could launch a Nuwaring generic in the second quarter. What's uh, the number that you have in mind now? No, no, no. We never negated that we could launch Nuwaring in second quarter. Last time we said we you know, we indicated it could be in the second half of this financial year, but in most likelihood, it could be the first half of the next calendar year then I mean it could be somewhere I mean it could be I, it all depends on when we really get the approval but it could be in that range uh, okay so we'll watch out for a Nuwaring launch in that but uh, can you give us some more details on the regulatory status of the Shrikakulam and Duwara plant the FDA clearance is taking a lot of time uh, on this uh, Somen that's right it, is, uh, it has taken a lot of time so far as Duwara is concerned we ourselves uh, have taken a lot of time to do the cultural transformation that we have initiated and feeling confident before inviting USFDA to audit, which we have done now. Now we are waiting for USFDA to come and audit us. So far as Srikakulam is concerned, there have been you know, ongoing dialogue with USFDA and they, there were specific queries which required more data on our part to give and we have been processing and giving as and when the requests are coming. Okay, the other drug that I want to speak about is Copaxone. What's the status of the queries on this drug? So Copaxone again, uh, we have to respond what uh, the CR was there. It's taking time at our end. So once we respond, then again it will be processed by USFDA. So again, uh, definitely uh, Copaxone is not something we can launch in this calendar year. It will be next. But when uh, probably uh, Copaxone uh, could be somewhere in the second half of next calendar year. 
Okay, the other drug I want to talk about is uh, DFNO2. When is the expected approval and what is the peak revenue potential that you are anticipating for this one? DFNO2 uh, has uh, multiple kind of uh, opportunities. So we don't think we ourselves will go and tap each and every opportunity. So for some specific opportunities, we may go for some kind of a out licensing or so. But um, initially, uh, as we have learned from our Gemrace launch experience, where the uh, payer coverage is extremely important and uh, pre launch marketing is also equally important. So, we will focus on the FNG02. After that, I can give you some idea what is uh, the likely pick revenue potential that we can look for it, but um, uh, it is a significant molecule. So it will depend on how much we are able to invest to get what kind of peak potential. So we do that calibration and then we will give an idea later. Uh, so when any business realignment that you're doing in terms of your manufacturing, R&D, uh, SG&A rationalization? No, we have been uh, not a business realignment, but uh, as a part of your strategy, you will always try to focus on specific spaces that you would like to operate. But uh, we have been doing a lot of uh, efforts on organization uh, design and making it more efficient. We have been focusing on network rationalization. So uh, one of the antibiotics plant that we had in USA, uh, we decided to divest. Uh, because of this network rationalization plan. What about uh, proprietary products and the challenges there? You know, there are challenges around the ramp up and new launch pipeline there. It's a challenging space, no doubt, but at the same time, there are good opportunities and potential. We have um, made a significant capital allocation to this business so far. And there has been a lot of competency which has been built and experience one has got. So now uh, we we'll have to see how do we get to the profitability uh, at what time frame. Uh, for our part, the endeavor will be to get to the profitability first and then think of other uh, exploiting growth potentials on various molecules that we have in our portfolio. What's the biosimilar plan for regulated markets, Somen? Uh, because the FDA is focusing on bringing in more biosimilars to the market. Yes, yeah, so we will be continuing the uh, focusing on biosimilar and trying to take it to the developed market. Of course, um, we'll have to see how do we really fund that, but our focus will be there. Okay, uh, let me try this again uh, again on Suboxone, Somen. Uh, uh, is, is the number below $20 million for the sales that you booked? Since we are not disclosing the specific number, so I cannot tell you that number. But all that I can tell you is that it is less than what Indiver has said. No, the reason I'm asking this, Omen, is that the market is really concerned that the numbers came in only on account of Suboxone. So there should be some, some more clarity on that number. Otherwise, people saying that, you know, the base business is really bad and, and you know, they, they haven't done well. So that's why I'm again and again asking what's the Suboxone number. No, I, 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 I appreciate what you are uh, saying, but uh, if market has assumed so, um, that may not be correct assumption. And I am categorically, I am categorically stating that our sales from Suvaxan is lower than the figure that you are indicating what Indiver has said. Okay, we leave it at that. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Somen, and all the best for the quarters.